Hello everyone, we are uh, here at the studio of the festival. We have uh, with us three of the members of the international jury. Uh, first of all, we have the president, Xiao Zhuan Zhu, from China and from Canada, actually, because she came all the way from Montreal. We have uh, also Gert Hermans from uh, Belgium. And uh, we have Doros Dimitriou from Cyprus, so, but it's going to be in English, <laughs> which is not uh, an unknown language in uh, Cyprus. So welcome, first of all. Uh, we want to welcome you in a, a quite a strange, very strange year for the festival because it's, uh, it's just after the, the pandemic. Uh, we missed last year with the online festival, we missed the physical festival. And uh, now we're trying to return to a more uh, normal situation, which is obviously not easy in uh, the festival world, as we all know from our uh, experience elsewhere. Um, Xiao, you came all the way from Canada. It's your first time here. Yes. What do you do for a living? Uh, not much. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as you said, I was born and grew up in China and then I emigrated to Canada, and now I live and work in Montreal uh, for a production and distribution company of feature films and TV series. And I'm in charge of international distribution, and they were specialized in children's cinema. People are saying that this uh, company is like the UN of uh, children's films. <laughs> uh, is it true? Uh, yes, some people say that, and some people call us the Northern Disney. Uh, but we're different. We're probably a little bit better. <laughs> but we're much smaller, and uh, so size doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's uh, <laughs> it's about uh, it's it's another another thing that has to do obviously with how the people have opportunities to watch films that otherwise they wouldn't have the opportunity to watch. I think you're, what you're doing with the attraction distribution is exactly. Uh, uh, giving attention to films and uh, presenting uh, uh, opportunities for, for films to be shown around the world. We do our best to discover, uh, promote and distribute children films that are independent, developed, produced at a very modest budget in mostly foreign languages, which are not English, um, and uh, distribute them across borders um, and that's why they are kind of obscure movies and some of them find their ways also at festivals and with the help of festivals they get also certain visibility. That's uh, for us it's a very important thing because uh, you know you have to make I think for the selection of the films it's a, you have to make a research a big research in, in the in the market you are a, a very good and reliable source of uh, films uh, that uh, actually matter. We I have think that flattery is mutual <laughs> because we both uh, do research and sometimes you are ahead of us as well. And you have also discovered films that we would pick up commercially afterwards or vice versa. So I think that's why we're complimentary festivals and commercial activities. Yeah. Gert, you're coming from a uh, from an organization that in Belgium uh, that uh, has been doing uh, something that combines uh, distribution and uh, uh, festivals and uh, all kinds of educational activities. We try to combine distribution at the moment. The, the organization is called JEF. We try to combine distribution, education, uh, festival, production support, and we try to make statements for the benefit of children's film in our own country. Uh, and me personally in this company, I'm, I'm no longer involved in distribution, not so much in festivals, not in education, but I do try to convince the industry in Belgium about that maybe it could be worth investing some time and effort and passion and love in this um, thing called children's film. So we try to convince producers filmmakers that it's worth um, investing their time and effort. And at the same time, you are uh, a key person for the ECFA, for the European Children's Film Association. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Let's, that's let's talk about uh, what you're doing at the ECFA and a little bit about the ECFA. Yeah, ECFA is what makes my heart beat in the world of children's film, I think, because 
am I, did I end up in this business because I'm such a huge film fan? No, I'm, I'm a film fan just like your, your audience is. Um, but uh, what I'm really, what really keeps me going is the feeling to be among colleagues, the feeling to be among people who have the same passion, who have the same ideas. And ECFA is a, an association that tries, that tries to unite people all over Europe who share the same passion. And a couple of years ago, we did a, a survey with our members. We have 150 members all over Europe and also outside Europe, where our most treasured and cherished members live. Um, <laughs> And also the hardest working, the hardest working people in the <laughs> film industry. Um, so we did this research, and out came that one of the keywords for most of our members was the word solidarity, and that's what made me super proud to work for an organization that carries the word solidarity in its flag because it's something that I really believe in, and that's why I am so happy. That's why my heart is beating for ECFA because it's some, it's a place where you can naturally share. Um, knowledge, information, um, and passion with colleagues all over the world. Uh, we have to mention that uh, Olympia Festival wouldn't exist without uh, ECFA in the first place, because uh, even the founding of the, the first uh, festival was uh, very much based on uh, the possibilities that the ECFA gave us through Felix Wagenderhoes and the Secretary General, who came here uh, and uh, helped a lot to, to, to the in, in the first election when uh, Dimitri Spiro, our uh, director, didn't really have the contacts around uh, Europe. And it was, uh, you know, an era where uh, no emails were yet <laughs> available. You could not find everything on, uh, on the web, which is obviously a, a very big uh, thing. Uh, and uh, we obviously we are still a member of the ECFA and very good, we have very good friends in the very ECFA. Very loyal and devoted members of ECFA and if one of the results of ECFA was that the, the festival here in Pyrgos has been established and growing, then I think it was worth <laughs> yeah, it worked. doing the job <laughs> because I'm so happy that we have festivals like yours among our members. I'm gonna go to the next uh, sofa <laughs> and this is Doros. Doros comes from uh, Cyprus, from a rather small, small country in the, in the edge of the Mediterranean, a member of the European Union, a Greek-speaking country, uh, with a very uh, small population, uh, around 600,000, if I'm not mistaken. A bit more. A bit more? <laughs> uh, how many? How many more? 800. 800, thousand. sorry, I was uh, somewhere, uh, 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 yeah, kind of. A consensus is happening these days, so, okay, so <laughs> we'll maybe, know maybe it was some older numbers I had in mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, you're working in, working in Kozia, you have a, you're, you're leading uh, a, a cultural workshop there where you're working with cinema and with other uh, arts. Can you tell us a bit about what you're doing with uh, the Politistico Ergastiri των Agion Omologiton? Um, thank you, Bandelis. Um, uh, my organization, the Cultural Workshop of Aiomologites, in English, is um, a cultural uh, center at the center of Nicosia. And uh, we work with dance, theater, music. And uh, I have the responsibility and the pleasure to be the person responsible for cinema programs. Our cinema programs the last few years have been uh, uh, supported by the cultural services of the Ministry of Education and Culture. And this has given us a big boost and a big uh, opportunity to uh, develop film education in Cyprus. Like you correctly said, we are a small country and uh, education about cinema um, is uh, crucial, especially in this day and age. Uh, we try, along with other uh, organizations and people, to develop that. And uh, we offer uh, film screenings, first of all. Um, we don't have, of course, a big festival like yours. Uh, and uh, we are very happy to participate uh, at such uh, an important international uh, event. But uh, we, we do small uh, steps which become bigger and we create things that in time and with uh, a network of collaborators 
uh, both in Cyprus and in Greece and abroad, uh, become more and more uh, known, successful and effective mm -hmm. uh, at the end. Uh, we also organize um, lectures, workshops. We collaborate with uh, the two uh, film festivals in Cyprus that have uh, children's sections. Um, and another one uh, which is coming up and growing up uh, the last two or three years. So, yeah, we try to um, put our efforts and uh, contribute to a better uh, knowledge of film, especially for young people and children, but not only. Uh, we do things for adults too. Gert, a question that's related to what Doris is doing in uh, Cyprus. Uh, from your experience, the ECFA has bigger and smaller members. What's the, uh, you know, there are some big organizations with big budgets, big, uh, you know, they can, they can do larger events and uh, have, you know, but uh, bigger impact uh, on, the, on the audiences. And then there are other smaller uh, organizations that are, uh, in many cases struggling with a very difficult situation in, the, in their countries, or maybe they are small and very, um, you know, they, they focus on a specific uh, point. Do you, do you think there's a, a, there's a ground of uh, collaboration bec between different speeds of uh, different, you know, levels of uh, organizations? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is, but um, I would personally strongly dislike the idea of the big festivals patronizing the small ones because that's not the kind of world we live in. Um, there should be like an, an equal exchange and an equal platform to speak on. But um, this is something I, I brought up many times recently uh, because it's, it's something new that I can feel in, in our association. I grew up in a time of um, big catalog festivals and your festival the importance of your festival was mainly decided by the size of your catalog and the number of films you had in uh, uh, for screening and these days with the new members of ECFA many new members I can feel there's a different there's a different drive often these are festivals that are rooted in um, in civil goals to perceive that these are small festivals that work in their local communities and they use film as a tool, not so much as a goal in itself. Um, for instance, last week I was in, in Norway where I am um, in a festival called Ablum, where they have three target groups, children with a minority migration background, children with uh, living in poverty and children with disabilities. <laughs> and that's a typical example of what I see nowadays among our new members. Often these festivals have a, st a strong social commitment. They want to make an impact on their own small community. And I think, personally, the wonderful thing about the Olympia Festival is that it's somewhere, it situates itself somewhere in the middle. You have a brilliant it started, It started somewhere in the, in the, the, the way you ex yeah. just described. Yeah, and you evolved into a festival that has really a great catalogue, but still the idea of social impact, I can see it everywhere in your catalogue. This is a festival that wants to make a change for the local community. And as far as we can see it this year, not under the best possible circumstances, but you do make an impact and this is what you really strive for. So I think you're, it's a beautiful position that you have somewhere situated between the big catalogue festivals that still exist and that we need to inspire us with, with what has been out on the market and the other type of festivals that strive for this local uh, We had a discussion some weeks ago in uh, Budapest also with uh, Felix van der Huysen in, uh, in a setting uh, at uh, Cinemira Festival, which is also one of the small festivals uh, that we're talking about, smaller festivals, and younger actually, because it's like uh, four or five years, I think. Uh, we had a discussion about exactly about uh, the thing with patronizing uh, bigger festivals uh, on smaller festivals. And this discussion was related, I mean, you have uh, uh, part of this discussion has been uh, uh, included in the ECFA journal uh, that was published uh, mm -hmm. last week. Uh, and uh, this was a discussion actually that had to do with the, the fact that in Europe there are 
pub- there is public support for uh, all this kind of uh, stuff. But in uh, in Canada, you also have public support for some things. But the, it's a it's a, it's a diff- different uh, story, I think, with Europe. Do you have uh, it, working in uh, in Canada? I mean, if you if you were distributing films in Europe. The beginning of the of the discussion would be to find where uh, the where the money is because there is some money coming from uh, uh, public sources, either national or uh, European, that can uh, help uh, European films, uh, you know, get distributed and uh, get an audience in the end. This is not the case in uh, Canada, I think. Can you explain to us how it works in? Uh, non-publicly supported uh, market because the European market is uh, definitely supported by public money. Um, this is a good question and uh, maybe it can have different layers. Uh, European or EU distributors of EU produced movies very often they can get national support, regional support, as well as your image, right? Media support. Um, and uh, when these movies, including children films uh, from Sweden, from Germany, from France or Holland, are exported outside Europe and be distributed in a country like in uh, Canada or even Latin America, the national uh, subsidy system also in those countries have an export support program to support uh, PMA of uh, many uh, theatrical distribution of those uh, uh, movies from those countries. So the uh, European public subsidy system also extends itself a little bit outside Europe, including for children's movies. Is that a good thing or bad thing? It's uh, probably up to debate. Um, in Canada, when we buy, acquire a Greek movie or um, a, a French movie, it probably does make a difference if there is a subsidy to collect from CNC in France. So you, if the quality, the commerciality of both films is very similar, and then one country offers 10,000 euros to cover part of the PMA in Canada, the Canadian distributor's tendency would, of course, to try to get the French movie rather than the Greek movie. Maybe you don't have that Mm -hmm. subsidy. And because of that, um, the very uh, Canada also followed the the lead of European countries. And now we have also public subsidy for foreign theatrical or digital distributors of Canadian movies. So we are also giving out 95,000 Canadian dollars per movie uh, in multiple countries uh, for the total amount of this uh, amount. But that kind of program uh, is annual, can be suspended anytime. It all depends uh, if we have the extra money. And that's really the extra money we can find outside the mainstream funding uh, for production. and national distribution of local movies. Yeah. So this uh, whole uh, thing uh, uh, is uh, with how distribution works is quite complicated uh, actually and the systems are uh, different from country to country and uh, uh, all this discussion obviously comes as a, uh, the, the, the need for all this uh, system uh, exists because uh, obviously the if you get to, if you get to see the market uh, the, the the film market in general mm-hmm. it's uh, dominated by american uh, productions obviously that uh, cover up much of the distribution and the consumption of uh, films the actual audiences mm-hmm. are mostly like that how do we cope every, everybody how do we cope with this how do we uh, what's, what's our answer to the fact that the films that we usually select uh, either uh, when you buy a film or you select it in a festival uh, or you you know you prefer mm-hmm. it to other films how do we cope with the, f- with the fact that the audiences uh, are already watching uh, other things is it uh, is it a, something that uh, is it a fight is it a peaceful coexistence between uh, 
you know, mainstream, uh, big mainstream things and uh, the kind of stuff that we are prefer? I don't know who. I, I, I would say that ideally it should be a peaceful coexistence. And uh, what uh, I believe uh, we can do is to um, encourage people, first of all, to have a look at least at this kind of uh, uh, art. Uh, that, uh, to, first of all, in countries like uh, Cyprus, or, um, where the, the huge uh, share of the uh, film distribution market is the mainstream, let's call it, uh, we have to let people know that there are, uh, there are that these uh, non, uh, how can I say it, non Hollywood at least, mm -hmm. films uh, exist. That's the first step. And then by acting, um, and I mean screening these films, and uh, in parallel speaking to people with um, uh, an honest way and uh, letting people to know more about these films, but also uh, about cinema in general, because cinema has its history, has its own language, has its own values, and as uh, if you know more about this, you are more able as a young person, as a child, and as an adult to appreciate this cinema and enjoy it uh, uh, at the end. Xia, what's your opinion on the same issue? I personally believe that what you do in your childhood could have long-lasting effect on the rest of your life. And that's why I believe every child should be able to have access to quality movies made by studios as well as independents. I'm not saying that all films made by studios are not high quality, that's not true, because they have the resources to assemble the best talents in the world from every step of the way. But a lot of um, big budget films are also fast food. And um, I do think that we all have different tastes around the world. What do you see if a child, imagine a child has never seen an independent children film for the first 12 years of his life and then you expect him to come out and see uh, a small budget film that might really feel very weird, right? So even in Canada, we also are lobbying the government that we need to support the exhibition, the distribution, the promotion, as well as children film festivals targeted at children so that they grow up in the environment that going to see a small independent film from Azerbaijan or from Indonesia, it's a very natural thing. It's part of the personal education you need. It's not everything you, you, you learn in class is important. What you do outside is also important, and that also includes film education. And film education cannot exist without watching those movies that are selected many, many times by people like you. Gert? First of all, I think you bring us in a very difficult position because it's, it's, it's really a word that I try to avoid is this word quality because there was this tradition that in our industry, we, yeah, what we serve is quality. But it's not so easy to define. As, as Xiao just said, there is quality to find in, in, in different yeah. traditions and in different... And then the second thing is that... Um, I might not be the person who is into big theories or, or uh, statements. I leave it to the to wiser me. people sitting <laughs> next to me. But what I do like is stories. And um, so I would like to answer your question with the story from this morning when one of my uh, jury colleagues, who you meet later in this TV show, I, um, I hope, she asked me, um, is one of your children involved in, in the whole filmmaking in the festival world? And I said, no, because I remember the example I have from one of my colleagues 
and his name is Felix, and you all know him, um, who told me that um, about his son when he was young, he was looking at the world of cinema and he was dividing it, it in two categories. <laughs> There is the exciting cinema, <laughs> and there's daddy's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, so I never, I never imposed too much this idea of, of the sacred cinema thing on my children, because I don't want them to end up with daddy's boring stuff. Um, so <laughs> I would be the last one to set my family as a perf perfect example to the outside, of how the outside world should be organized. <laughs> That would not be the case, but at least, yeah, I, I try to live by this this uh, this rule that you show your kids, or in this case, the kids of your city, you show them the broadest possible spectrum, including the all types of cinema, and you hope that they will pick out the things that are like, worthwhile and that means something to them. And on the other hand, I've often been so happily surprised to see what kids can pick out. And this is one of the, the major excitements from a festival that you often see like, mm -hmm. wow, <laughs> I didn't know they were, that this film would speak to children on this tone and with this impact. So that is what youth fest festival people can measure sometimes, but I'm sure that sometimes you're surprised as well. About yeah, obviously, but I, I think in the end, uh, you know, you have to trust children with uh, with the, with, the, with the options to give them the mm -hmm. to give them the options, and then if you trust them with that, they can you know do their thing. It's not about uh, patronizing anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I totally understand the the, the discussion about uh, quality films. What is quality? Obviously, when you have resources, you can do miracles. But uh, uh, there are some things that are uh, different uh, in the films that the, we are. Uh, uh, usually uh, selecting <laughs> like languages, different languages, different cultures, different countries of uh, origin, which is not the case with mainstream uh, um, uh, hits, f film hits, because they have, uh, you know, it's one language, it's, uh, it's, it, it doesn't really help to understand that the, the multiplicity and the complexity of, world, of the world, actually. Yeah, but I think we also, we also should give our compliments to the Olympia, Olympia Festival which is not a cowardish festival. You no, it's are really. very courageous <laughs> and you know that you can challenge your audience, maybe because you educated it for 24 years now, but you are a festival that dares to challenge its audience and probably you get the audience that you deserve, one an audience that loves to be challenged from time to time. It doesn't end at some point, I think, eh? because the audience is naturally renewed mm -hmm. uh, in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like that? I mean, we have uh, uh, we have uh, the, the, an audience that at some point they grow up. They're not our audience anymore, and then we have a new audience every every year. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to, to to retain the audience. I think some of your early audiences, twenty four at the beginning of the twenty four years, are now parents. Are they bringing their own children yeah, yeah. back to the cinema? And uh, also we have the other thing, which is uh, what you saw in the opening ceremony, like the, the girls that were presenting. Mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. so they, they came at the festival when they were like, I don't know, eight years old. Which means that you give your audience, one way or another, a co-ownership of the festival. Yeah. Or they grow that's into the, a co-ownership. That's, that's the spirit. Obviously there are, you know, differences, but yeah, that's the spirit. I think we love that spirit, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> and. Uh, Picking up from what Gert said about the courageousness of this festival, we must always remember that I am here for the first time and I'm uh, impressed by what you are doing. And I can only imagine what uh, you are doing under normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. And um, we must, mustn't forget how courageous the decision of holding this festival uh, this year is, and I think uh, I speak for everyone uh, that we have this uh, amazing uh, experience now, and, and this is a result of uh, how brave you people are, uh, in simple words.
<laughs> Thank you very much for your good <laughs> words, uh, for your kind words. Yeah, uh, there are uh, lots of challenges, but it's not uh, the the subject of this uh, discussion. It's uh, <laughs> there are cameras here. I can tell you some details later on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, we have uh, an idea of what you're doing. You have an idea of your opinions on uh, the children uh, film. Uh, uh, you know. All, all, all this world of children film and I would like really like to thank you very much for uh, this discussion and uh, we'll see you in the cinema of course right thank yeah. you very much thank, thank you. you thank you